Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. Today I have a quick question submitted by one of our users on Instagram and they want to know what other stitch marker substitutes there are. Um, in one of our previous episodes, I talked a little bit about crochet tools and I gave a list of what things you don't have to spend your money on and you can get substitutes just with things lying about like your house or your office, like paper clips for example. So we had an overwhelming number of responses from people wanting to know what specifically these substitutes were that I mentioned because uh, I didn't go into details in that episode. So I would cover that today and also tell you where to buy them. So the first thing you could use in place of a stitch marker are safety pins. Now, of course, with safety pins, having a pointy bit, it's a little bit dangerous and not something that I would recommend if you say you're in an environment with kids around or younger children around. I have heard of stories where they leave their, you know, their tool bags open and kids get into it and have hurt themselves on the safety pins. But if you go and search, like do a Google search of something called metal stitch markers, basically they market this metal stitch markers as basic stitch markers that you can use, but they're no different from safety pins. The only difference is they have a big uh, loop at the bottom. It doesn't have the spring that will catch onto your yarn. But ultimately they're just safety pins. The next thing you can use are paper clips. Uh, I think this was what I mentioned in that episode but I don't recommend paper clips at all because you would need in order for it to be functional you would need to sort of pull the paper clip apart to give it space between you know the metal bits and you you need to pull it apart basically and by doing so you don't give it the strength to sort of hold itself together and spring back to keep your yarn captured in the middle. Another option that you can use are bobby pins and this is something that I'm only starting to do myself. I've never used bobby pins as stitch markers before but I saw on Pinterest a photo of someone trying to explain a particular stitch and they use like a series of bobby pins like maybe three or four and I thought that it was such a wonderful way to use what most girls would already have in their in their you know in their makeup bag or something so that's what I did I got out a few and I was very pleasantly surprised with how effective it is um, but I will say though, I had two different kinds of bobby pins. One of them are the, the ballet ones, the ones that don't have that ball at the end and that lay flat and can be quite sharp. And there are the other kinds with the, the ziggy zaggy bit of the bobby pin with two protective balls on the end of the sharp part. And I think those work better because it gives you a natural opening to sort of push into your stitch. So I would recommend that and because it snaps back together, which is sort of the purpose of a bobby pin, I think it works perfectly well to also hold your yarn in place as you're working. The next option would be to use spare yarn that you have if you have any tails that you've cut off from previous projects, I would recommend you not throw them away. Keep them in like a jar or something out of the way that you can pull out small pieces, maybe like five to six centimeters or you know three or four inches long and use a spare crochet hook to pull this particular tail through the stitch that you want to mark and I also think this way is really great if you have multiple colors and you need to mark different things like one color could represent a type of stitch for example if you know you need to skip that stitch and you have a pattern that requires you to skip stitches throughout your work then you know maybe maybe put like a red yarn or whatever color yarn that you choose and then similarly if you need to maybe do an increase or a decrease in that particular area uh, a good example of a stitch that would require that would be like the chevron if you're doing the chevron stitch then you could use different colors to indicate different type of stitches that you know you need to do be it to skip or to increase or you know maybe put a bubble or or a popcorn stitch and whatever you need to at least it's a visual indication for you based on the colors. And also another substitute you could use in place of stitch markers would probably be lobster claws. Um, 
you know, those kind of lobster claw clefts that you find at the end of like a bracelet or a necklace. Don't get the ones that are too small. Maybe get ones that are like one inch large so that you have some sort of grip on it. And the cute thing about these lobster claws uh, stitch markers is that they always, always, always have some sort of charm at the end of it. And I see them on Etsy all the time and they look so cute. They, they are sold in like a pack of five or six with different, different charms at the bottom. And they're kind of like Pandora bracelets, but for your crochet work. And I think they're so cute because you can get a variety of them or you can even make them yourself. But that would also require you going out and spending money, which is sort of something that we're trying to avoid here. So, but that's an option if that's what you want. Another option for you is if you don't have any of that and you have nothing, say you're like on a bus or in a coffee shop where you need a stitch marker urgently and you don't have anywhere to grab them from, um, you could consider leaving a very, very long tail at the start of your work. So when you create that slip knot and put it on your hook, leave an extremely long tail. One that is long enough for you to pull upwards onto your work or the stitch that you're working on and just slide it in between the stitches before you carry on to your next stitch. So that at least, at least it's a visual indication because you have this now tail sticking out and folding in a weird way into your current stitch. So that could be a very temporary approach, but it's still something that could work for you. Especially if you find yourself in a pickle and you need a stitch marker immediately. So now the other question we get all the time is also where to buy quality stitch markers because a lot of the ones that you get online are made of plastic and the reason for that is because plastic is soft and can bend when you apply pressure on it and that is kind of the point, that's kind of what you want in stitch marker so that you could manipulate it into, you know, if you're using like a chunkier yarn and that size in between stitches is going to be much wider, then you need a plastic stitch markers that you can physically manipulate to stick into the stitches. And as far as whether they're good quality or not, I really can't help you there. That would depend on who you buy from and where you buy from. And of course, before you put any purchase online, please make sure that you check that the store is a legit store and that you trust the, the goods that they send out to you. And it's just trial and error until you find a particular store that you enjoy and that you want to, you know, support continuously. Uh, Etsy also has a lot of them. And I think Etsy, you can sort of trust the sellers a little bit more because they're independent people like you and me looking for a way to make an income so they put it on Etsy so I think Etsy is a safe bet especially if you want to get those really pretty lobster claw charm stitch markers Etsy is a great place I I don't recommend you buying them like say from like Shopee or AliExpress or that or Taobao that Chinese website because a lot of the times, the quality that you get from them are really horrible. Some of them, I've received those with um, corners that are, are, haven't been filed down, so they're sharp and have jagged edges where uh, the machine has sort of molded it into shape. So I don't recommend that. Basically, anywhere that you can buy yarn would usually sell the tools that go along with it. So you can more often than not find stitch markers wherever you buy yarn, be it online or physical. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions. This is something that we get asked all the time, I guess, because, you know, stitch markers are so specific to this. So if you have any other questions, feel free to throw them at me on Instagram at CrookedCrochetSG. Our website is www.crookedcrochet.com or you can text me or WhatsApp me at 912727743 if you're in Singapore. And yeah, that concludes today's episode. I hope I've answered all of your questions. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.